Hello, this is Cheryl Wilson and welcome back to my channel. I'm sharing this piece of art with you today. For one, it's a new technique for me in painting, but it is also a very emotional painting because it, it has a lot of the, um, the concept of what's in the title, when scars become art. And when you see this painting, when I started, the underneath, what you see in the end is a lot of beautiful colors. It's like layers of a person's life and the beauty of, of what a person goes through in their life. And then the juxtaposition of a, a layer on top and the markings and the scars of, of a person's life when things come into their life that mar them and hurt them and scar them and the emotional um, issues that happen. But in the end, it becomes a beautiful piece of art and the strength of a woman or man behind um, this piece of art, the, the outcome of what a person goes through when they go through emotional issues and then they come out on the other end. That's just kind of what I wanted to put out there with this painting. So there's, um, you'll, you'll hear me allude to it as I go through the explanation of the creation of When Scars Become Art. I wanted to show you a smaller painting so I could show you more in depth of the painting and the, the technique that we're after. Mm -hmm. As you look through on this painting, you see scrapes uh, down through to the canvas from this top painting. And when I start to show the painting and how it starts, I didn't want you to get confused because it's totally different than the end result but the scratches and the scrapes through the technique I use go all the way down, some through the canvas, some not through the canvas, but I wanted to show you the end so you could understand the, um, the beauty of this technique and how it can be used several different ways to create something that is, as, as, to me, a beautiful um, technique. All right, this is a very long um, canvas. So I'm gonna show you just um, in w one end and then I'll turn it around and show you the other. But I'm starting again with, with some two paints. They're thicker than what I normally use with the golden. And I'm sorry for that light. Hopefully I fix that further down, but <clears throat> um, this is some orange that I had in the tube. And, um, I'm just trying to squeeze the last bit out, but I do a lot of the same type of a technique as I used with the last painting I did, when I did the finger painting, and I just maneuver the paint uh, all over the canvas. I'm going to put this on fast speed um, so that that flickering won't bother you so much, but you'll see what I do when I get to the end of a tube. I cut the end off and squeeze paint out from the, the back end because sometimes you can't get it out through the top. So that's just a kind of like a um, little thing there that if you haven't learned how to do that, then it, it you can get some good bit of pain out of the end. So I'm gonna fast forward and just have you watch me pretty much finger paint at this point.
So this is where I take the spray paint and I'm using gold spray paint. It's one of the better brands. It is an actual artist spray paint. And I like it because it doesn't clog. But I'm using about four or five colors of the warm colors. I'm using reds, oranges, yellows, and some pinks. So the process here is to spray down the spray paint and intermix them among each other. And while it is still wet, I'm using a piece of deli paper and a scraper. That's a spatula. But I'm covering the canvas, and I'm not really worrying if I'm covering it totally, but um, some if some of the black shows through of some of the darker lines, that's okay with me. But the point is, is, is the spray paint, while it's wet, is to put down either the deli paper, or you could use newspaper, or other, you can try other types of papers, to put it down when it's still wet or tacky, pull up some of the color and it's almost like I'm modeling the, the 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 paint so that I'm blending them together and then I'm also scarring the paint scarring the canvas and making marks through the deli paper or right on the canvas I have to be careful because I don't want to go through my canvas now this canvas was gessoed before then that colorful layer was laid down than the spray paint. It did act a little bit differently than when I did a painting with it on the canvas without gessoing first. I felt that the texture was a little easier to pull the paint up when I used a painting that did not have an additional coat of my gessoing it. But as you can see, um, the um, the paint is still wet and the point is 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 to give it a like a mottled look and to scrape through with a tool a sharp tool almost like scarring marks into the the paint So I'm going to repeat this process over and over again. And again, it's putting down different layers of spray paint, pressing the deli paper into the uh, paint to blend it and pull up some of the color, and then marking through. And it actually works a little bit better the more, the if you've let it, dry just a little bit to a more tacky. So it's just basically playing with it and each color was slightly different. So you'll have to try the different uh, colors and I didn't mind if some of that deli paper stuck to the paper, uh, to the painting, because it kind of just gave it another look. But my point is, is I want to scar this canvas. I want it to look like it's worn and scarred and so I'm going to put it on on a faster speed and um, just let you watch because it's it's just repeating this process um, over and over again.
So what I'm adding when I add the black is um, a little bit more of a, a dynamic and just to give the eye a, a something different to look at. And when you scrape on top of a mark, it kind of takes it back a layer so it's not as bold. And that's what I'm doing when I'm, I'm modeling down the, the paper on top of that and then um, marking through the, the black marks. So I'm going to show you the whole piece again so you can see up close when the piece is dried what the scraping looks like. Now nowhere in here, because I believe when I put the gesso on there it gave it another layer of protection, but I didn't get down through to the bottom of the canvas like I did the first piece. I'm going to pop the first piece in real quick here. So you can see that piece got down to the canvas and this piece different didn't, but it's still equally as beautiful. The scraping through, the, uh, the way that the spray paint, when you dab it with the paper, newspaper or deli paper or whatever you wanna use, just blends it together and pulls a layer off to the top and it just leaves this beautiful markings on the canvas so i hope you've enjoyed this and this has been something that you might want to try and then try different techniques different tools scraping through the paint um try spray paint and acrylic paint together just just be playful in um, trying the techniques together but it gave a different look on the painting than just using acrylic paint which i really loved so i hope you enjoyed this do a thumbs up for me to let me know that you were here and stayed to the end i'd really appreciate it i appreciate your support and um just let me know what you think of this technique <music>